Team, welcome. Welcome to the first day for our Selenium with J Unit training, the batch of August 18th. Thank you for being here, and uh, I'm glad that uh, we will go forward and interact to learn Selenium tool, primarily with a focus on using the J Unit part of the coding to it. All right. So, team, I'm assuming that most of you may have gone through the overview of the training program and have probably also watched some of the demo sessions that are there on YouTube. So I will try and not to keep any kind of a content towards what the training is and how it is. I would rather try and spend time focusing on teaching and learning aspects for the tool itself. All right. So at this time, I just want to take a very, very quick audio check to and the screen check to make sure that all participants can see and uh, my screen view the changes that happen as I move my mouse around and you are also able to hear me fine. You could send me your messages over the chat. You are all currently muted uh, just to make sure that you have a better audio reception and there's no other background noise. However, whenever you have a question or a comment, you can always put that over the chat and uh, make sure that if there is a question that you really need to speak that out, you could use the option to raise your hand. Okay. However, I'll make sure that I take breaks in between of the topics and then take up your questions. Okay. Uh, so team also just make it a point that do ask questions, feel free to interact with me, but make sure you're interacting with me on the topics that are being uh, currently conducted. Do not try and uh, talk about anything that is related with the training program and other things. We can keep that for an offline discussion. All right, Tim, so let's get started. So we are here today to begin our journey towards how can we master this Selenium test automation tool. Okay, I will not even take too much time explaining what the tool is, but primarily the fact that Selenium is an open source test automation tool, which means that there's no license fee to it, and it can be used in a very, very efficient manner for cross-browser testing, which means that you could test your different web-based applications on different types of browsers and their versions plus it can support multiple programming languages so either any organization which has let's say it's a dotnet shop or a java shop or a ruby on rail shop they could use any technology to further enhance and get the best out of this test automation tool now what is the most important part of a team is that Selenium has become so popular in the market these days that you will eventually see that the trend of the number of jobs or the kind of weightage your resume or profile will have when you put the right kind of experience of Selenium into it, it is going to be significantly different from what it was probably earlier on your resume and so on. All right. So my whole approach is to try and focus on the practice aspects so I do not like to focus at all on the theory aspects everything that we do will be project based it will never be a concept based in the sense that I'm not going to explain that here is the concept here is the thing this is the tutorial and then try and apply it rather we will start with the project I'll say that here is my need here is what we need to be doing now let's try and learn how can selenium or the coding behind it can help us achieve that okay that's going to be the approach it's going to be very practical it's going to be very intense in terms of programming yes 90 percent of the participants are absolutely beginners into any type of coding so that's my audience and i want to make sure that i address it accordingly now please also do note that this is not a java training what it means is java by itself is an ocean of knowledge it's an ocean of uh, tools and technologies, we will pick the subset of the entire Java platform and I will make sure that you learn from the basic, basic fundamental concepts and grow it to an extent that you could design, build, 
and maintain different types of automation frameworks as needed. All right. So that's the overview team. Now, uh, I am not. Uh, I really want to take questions uh, on the training program itself, but let's keep that for later. But let's kick off. Start on what we are all here today for to learn Selenium itself. So there are primarily three main parts to Selenium. The first is the Selenium IDE, which is nothing but the UI, which is very simple, easy for us to work on. Then we will go to something called as the Selenium RC. That is where we'll spend over 70-80% of the time uh, during these sessions. And then this final thing component, which is very, very powerful, called Grid. Okay. So we will start with Selenium IDE today and see what it is, how it is, and so on. Now, before I jump into explaining what Selenium IDE is or RC is, let me give you a quick structure of a folder. Since this is very practical in nature, I will be creating a new folder under my C drive slash Selenium and I'm going to name this as August AUG5. Sorry, AUG18. And that's basically our class folder. Okay, as we progress in the sessions, all the classes that get conducted will be put into this folder and you will be sh given an access or I'll be constantly sending you the output from this. So all the class files and the scripts that we do in the class will be out here. Okay. Now, let's talk about automation. Let's talk about testing in at a very basic level. To do that, what I'm going to do is uh, let's begin with going and trying to understand what it is that we would like to do. All right, team. So I'm going to start with an application like, let's say, dice.com. Right? I'm not yet into automation. I'm not in, yet into Selenium. But once I get there, I will explain it to you. At the moment, just imagine that you are a simple user. I'm trying to explain simple functionalities. Then we will go about what is manual testing regarding that. And then how do we automate things? All right? So what is Dice.com? I'm sure most of you are aware or have been visiting this often. This is a job portal. So members or job seekers could come in here and search to see if there are relevant jobs fitting their skills or technology in the specific locations they are interested in. right? And then they could go forward and apply it. This is an application which gets used by hundreds of thousands of people. It also gets used by employers who are trying to post the jobs that here is the requirement, right? So it is very critical for DICE.com or the corporation behind DICE to keep things running effectively and make sure that there are no uh, simple to complex errors, defects or bugs as we call them in that application, right? So I want to take a very simple scenario, very, very easy for us to understand and try and then go about into automation. The reason I try and keep my scenario simple to begin with is once you master the functional aspect or what it is that we're trying to do, then it is very easy for us to learn the concepts from that new tool. So the simple aspect that I want to do is something like, let's say that I want to go and type and see selenium what do i get for jobs for selenium and let's say that i want to search for los angeles okay and next i'm going to click on find jobs as soon as i do that i see the most current relevant jobs in my search results okay i, I get my search results and it tells me what is it that i'm searching for where is it i'm searching for and it tells me how many results are there and so on. This is one of the most critical functionality for this application. Okay. Now that I've told you about it, why do I need to test it? I need to test it if I'm part of the testing organization and make sure that whoever is using this specific feature or functionality is not seeing an error. If they're searching for Selenium, they want to get those out here. If they're searching for a specific uh, zip code or area, 
they want to get that information out here right so that's the intent now to move forward what I will do is I want to organize myself in the sense anything that I wish to do I would love to put it into a simple Excel file and then take that Excel file as more like my blank book or a handbook to guide me forward of what I need to do okay so I'm gonna copy one of the old files that we've used um, from a previous batch so that I can use the template and let's see if we could quickly do a modification on it okay definitely not this one let's see if this goes good okay I have something called plan good so this is good for us I'm going to delete the other one now team here is a simple Excel template do not be confused about what you see it's just that we're going to develop them we're going to customize it as we move forward right now I'm going to either hide information that we don't require or we're going to take care of uh, writing our own steps here okay so here is a very very simple test plan template what it means is is it the actual automation test plan or the manual test plan that you would see no it's a snapshot it's a beginning it's a place where I can document things and then I can make sure that people are able to follow a systematic procedure when they're testing things so what is the application that I intended to show you for this test I wanted to show you dice.com that is my main URL so I'm going to put that in my first thing and what is the functionality that I'm checking for I'm testing test if the basic search works that's my simple very simple one set of functionality or one scenario or even you could call it a test case and we're using the browser Firefox okay now I could also introduce one more row here or many more rows here to describe what all we're doing and let's say automation tool what is it that I'm using I'm going to use selenium the IDE part of it I have not yet opened selenium we have not yet started to work on that now now that this is done what is the functionality that we wished to achieve okay how did we do it when we were automating or sorry when we were trying to test this application what is the whole intent you are given the responsibility to test to see if that functionality is working so what are the steps we performed the first one is we opened Firefox and visited the dice.com right website what was the next step we did we started to enter a title or a skill in the uh, uh, job title right so enter a skill or technology in that field there then we entered the location right and then we clicked on find jobs now what did we do after I clicked on the find jobs part of it what we did is I verified that I get a search results displayed okay verify that search results text is displayed okay then I also wanted to verify and see if I can see the keyword selenium here right and then what we could do is uh, you could just close the browser and so on whatever next okay but at a high level these are the steps so now let's make sure that I have the right numbers for it are these the only steps uh, is this a frozen template no you could expand and do what you need when you need it okay but this is a good starting point for us. so I have six, six steps written out here now if I send you this information over the email and let's say that we are trying to test this as a team and we are manual test engineers not yet automation do you understand when I write this what is it that I'm trying to do as manual users if I say open Firefox and visit dice.com will you be able to rest, uh, replicate the same thing yes 
if I say enter skill or technology, will you be able to do it? Yes, but you need what, but what technology, right? So sometimes you need additional information. Enter location, will you be able to do it? Yes, but what location, right? Click on find jobs, will you be able to perform that if this Excel is sent to it? Um, yes, this is probably not that tough to understand because you can see the button and do it. And probably other other steps also is not that tough for you to capture as manual users. Now, when it comes to automation, the whole intent changes to how can I teach a system, a process or a tool to learn to do and perform the same exact steps. To do that, I need to answer a few more questions. The questions are like, how do we go to Firefox? How do we visit Dice.com? Where do I enter that skill? And what is that skill or technology to enter? And so on. We need to start answering many more questions. And that's what Selenium IDE does automatically. Right? What do I mean by Selenium ID does automatically? I'm going to show you now. Now, team, there are installations for various features on Firefox and Selenium and JUnit and so on. Those will happen to us as we move forward in a gradual manner. Some of them are there as free videos on YouTube, but I will keep sending you all the installation documents to do what. Now, when you have received the Selenium ID installation, and you have installed that on Firefox, all I have to do to launch that is go to Tools and click on Selenium IDE. If you do not see that under your Tools, which only simply means that it is not installed as an add-on on your Firefox. Okay? So you have to go back and do it. Very simple steps. There's a, I think, couple of minutes video that shows you how to do it on my YouTube. You could visit that. Now, as soon as I launched it, here is my Selenium IDE UI. What's your UI? It's a user interface. What are, is it that the users are interacting or are able to see? Now, it's a very, very simple yet very powerful features it's, that are embedded into this. What is most important is as soon as you start, you will see that this icon out here is already pressed in or selected. And my mouse over shows me that it is now recording. What does it mean? I will not spend time, Tim, explaining this out here, the whole layout at the moment. But as we move forward, we will understand that. Okay? When I say, or when Selenium is ID is saying that it is recording, it is saying that whatever that I'm going to perform on the Firefox browser now will get stored, and it will try and learn what we am doing. Finally, I'll have the ability to play back the same thing and see, have I learned? When I'm saying I, it's Selenium. Did I learn what is needed? All right. So what did we do, team? The first thing is I typed Selenium out here, correct? As soon as I type, type Selenium and I move to the next field, observe what happens to this white area out here. Did you see that? I got two lines generated. This is the basic code that Selenium is creating as soon as I, it sees that the user, which is me right now, is performing certain steps on the application. Now let's say that I want to use a city and let's say we select Los Angeles. Okay. And once I click on find jobs, it will navigate me to the next page. As I kept going in, you see the different steps being generated. What is it that I wanted to do next? I wanted, after I click on find jobs, I want to verify that the search results text appears and I want to verify that the keyword Selenium is present. Manually, you and I can see, but the reason we're trying to automate is we wish to achieve the three most fundamental important concepts team. I'm going to use a very white background to quickly tell you about three fundamental things that are important for automation. The first thing is efficiency. If I automate a certain process and I know that it is not uh, doing faster than how I would have done things manually, it is failure. That is the first checkpoint. 
The next is that it needs to be reusable. Once I build it, I should be able to repeat that same thing again and again as needed. I do not want to constantly work on building it. Okay. I need to be able to reuse it. That's number number two. The third one, very important, is that it is accurate. If I instruct, write a code or do something and say, do A, B, C, D, E, then it must do A, B, C, D E exactly the way I give instructions. And if I, then I should be able to trust the tool that once it has performed these steps, whatever it shows me as a results is accurate. All right. If it gives me inaccurate results for any case, then it is not a good automation for us. These are the three most important concepts. It's got to be efficient. We should be able to reuse it with very simple little modifications. And it must give me accurate results. The most fundamental concepts for automation. Once I know that anything that I'm doing fits into every category in these three, then it's a good automation uh, that we have generated okay now going back to the selenium IDE and the uh, Firefox browser I wish to now see if search results is appearing out here okay <clears throat> to do that all I have to do now is right click on the search results and I have a few options at the bottom saying the last one is called show all available commands. This is a Selenium IDE feature that gets embedded into your browser. Okay. When I say show all available commands, it is saying that I can do different things on this, which is already preset for me. I just have to know what to do and how to use it. At this point, I want to verify if the text is present. What is the text I'm trying to search for? Verify text present search results, right? That's the text that I'm searching for. Once I do that, I get a new command. Very simple. I just right clicked and said search results. Uh, verify text present for that. For example, if I also want to verify for this, I will right click on the job title keywords or company name and say verify text present this. What I'm now doing is I'm teaching Selenium that Selenium I am going to tell you step by step what to do. Now show me if you can do the same thing efficiently. Can I reuse you again and again? And will you show me accurate results? Let's say I also want to search to see if keyword selenium is appearing out here. All right. Team, I'm going to take a very, very quick check to see if everyone can hear me fine and see my screens effectively. You can use the chat to send me a message if not. All right. All right. Good. Looks like I don't uh, see any issues with uh, for anyone. So I'm going to move forward. I'm going to finish the main part of it and then um, hand it over to you for any specific questions that you have on what we learned. Now I also want to verify text present selenium. So I have put three verifications. I'm verifying that the search results text is appearing. I'm verifying that I can see this job title keywords or company name. And I'm also verifying that Selenium is the keyword that is present. Now what Selenium ID has done is it has learned to perform those steps. How? When I say instruct Selenium, now show me what you've done. It is going to show us that, show that to us. Okay. Um, now, team, any questions that you have so far on what we did? Vijay, if your screen is frozen, I would strongly recommend for you to close this session and relaunch it, please. It is rare. It doesn't happen. But in case that's the case, please relaunch your session. Go to training. Paritosh, WebDriver is a very important concept, but that is not part of what we are doing today. I am not going to take that question. However, you could write an email to me on that and I'll respond back. Okay. Yes, I will be covering WebDriver also as part of this training program. How did you get target Selenium to appear? Uh, target Selenium. Okay. You know what? A very interesting question, Jack. The point is that I have not even focused on what was happening here. 
there is something called as command, there is a target or a value. What are these? We have not yet got into it. My focus was, can Selenium understand what I'm doing and can it re reproduce the same? Now, let's continue on the same question and see, Jack, uh, to see what has happened. Now, I'm still recording. So I can say stop recording. Recording is basically that Selenium, get into a state where you can learn. Now I perform things. Selenium, now you've learned. I'm going to stop recording. Then, when I click on this icon here, what it says is play current test case. What I recorded has got converted into something called as a simple test case and is stored on what I see right now. When I click on this run this test case, observe what happens to my browser on the right side. Did you see it very quickly navigated to dice.com as some of the steps are getting executed you will see some green then you saw some yellow then you saw some <coughs> sorry Tim then you saw a few dark green right now what is happened is that selenium has replayed what we did performed those steps and showed us exactly what is happening in the background all right. What you learned, Selenium, show me is what I'm saying by clicking on the play current test case. But unfortunately, you may have also observed that it is going at a certain speed, which is much faster for us to view, especially when we're still trying to learn what it is doing. Right. So I have the flexibility of the second feature here called I can ask Selenium to slow down the test run or go at full speed. So let's say slow it down to a certain extent. All right. And now I'm going to reinitiate the test run and see what comes out for us. You see a yellow line. It is indicating that that step is being executed. Once that is completed, it will move to a light green. But then I also see a lot of things out here called log. Not interested right now. We will come back to that later. At this point, my test is completed to run. I see different colors, symbols, and representations. But most importantly, I see that there are light greens, then there are dark greens. What does this mean? <coughs> it means that these are steps to perform. And it's saying that the light green is representing that these steps have been performed completed to do it okay I'm not yet got into that level of what is this command target or value the next one is darker green is saying that these are text to perform and verify that a certain thing is happening what is that certain thing am I seeing search results am I seeing this text am I seeing this text that's my whole uh, idea of that darker green shape so it's a very easy representation of what we're doing. Now, just a very quick what if, what if kind of a question. Let's say that I am playing this with this tool and trying to explore. I want to see, hey, great, now it works for Selenium as a keyword. What if I want to change the search term or the city? Can I reuse the same thing? Probably yes. How? Let me explain to you something about this command, target, and value. There are three most, or rather most fundamentally two questions that need to get asked and answered for an automation to be successful. First one is, what is it that we want to do? And that's called command. That's the what part. The next thing is, now that I know what to do, where should I perform that? That is the where part. What is it that I'm doing out here? I want to type. What do I want to type? Selenium. Where do I want to type? In this edit box. What I want to do here? I want to type. Where do I want to type? In this edit box. What is it that I want to type? Los Angeles. Same way, out here, what is it that I wanted to do? I wanted to click on this button. Okay. I wanted to click on this button, that's it. There's no other that I want to click this button, here is the value and so on, no. 
So my command is what is it that I want to do? My target is where should I perform that? Value is if I have additional details to provide, then I should be able to do it. For example, the skill or the location are go, have got captured here. Okay, great. So does that mean that I can go and modify what is already done? Yes. If I double click this, this command, this entire line or test step will be presented here. Now I can change it. Now I'm, I'm inquisitive. Let's say that I want to search for Selenium and QTP. Okay. <coughs> so if I change the value here, will it now take the new value and execute it? Let's try. So I've changed what was Selenium in value to Selenium and QTP. Now I don't need to record. Is this what I need to do to make the test run team? No, when I want to teach you, I'll do this. Now I'm trying to play back, but make those small simple modifications also. For that, we're using the play current test case. All right, now let's see if Selenium is able to replicate and perform the same steps. There you go. See, it's typed Selenium and QTP. Search results, everything appearing for us, and now it's going ahead to start to select everything. Right? So you'll still see that everything is a pass for us. See, I have QTP, Selenium, and so on. Just one more final step, team, and then I will take up any questions that you have. Okay? Let's say that I see this showing results 1 to 7 of 7. I want to also verify how many results or am I getting these results out here. How will I now add that command or that instruction and teach Selenium ID about it? All I got to do is select the bottom line out here. Okay. And let's say we we'll go back into the recording mode. I'm going to right click and say, Verify the same command, text present, showing results 1 to 7 of 7. Okay, now I have further modified my existing test case. I changed one of the values that we were entering earlier and I also added a new step into it. Okay, now let's say that I go back here and say Selenium uh, RCJ unit is my search term. Okay, just modify it. So look at how we are trying to play around and at the same time learn what we are uh, what we're here for. Okay, will it take that value? Great. This I didn't change. Now I have all the details that I needed to look at. And as my step runs, I see all the greens. But wait a minute. Now you see a new step which is in a different shade. It's a darkish pink close, closer to a red shade. That is telling us that that step failed. This passed, good. This passed, good. This passed, good. But why did this fail? This failed because it was looking for showing results 1 to 7 of 7. But what do you and I see at this point in the application which is being tested or application under test? I see showing results 1 to 1 of 1 because with all the three combinations, there was only one result that we could find. I didn't use or, or, no, I used, it should be Selenium, have RC and J unit, I only found one. But my test is saying I'm searching for this. Hence, it could not pass that. So wait a minute. So if does it mean that if I go here and change the target that I see the text from one to one of one and re-execute this test, then will it pass? If that is what it sees at that point in time, yes. If it does not see that at that point in time, no. But at least you know that you're able to give the right instructions to Selenium. There you go, this passed now. Do you see that team? So that's the basic overview of an IDE at a very, very basic level. But the real power of this tool will be when we trying to program, add our logic, trying to complicate our test further. All right. This is at a very, very preliminary level. If I just need to teach ID to you, team, the three free videos which are already on YouTube for Selenium are more than enough, I would say.
but the real power is the essence that we get to when we move to the RC part of it. All right. So team, that's primarily what I wanted to show you and that how we've answered these questions using the record mode. We have not yet come to a concept where we are repeating certain steps, but the status is that now we could teach Selenium ID how to perform and repeat the same steps. All right. So that was uh, more like the agenda for today. I wanted to do a quick overview for you. Now I'm ready to take questions if you have any, please. So Payutas, I'm trying to read your question from the chat. Uh, let's see. Could there be any situation where we don't know which text to verify when we write the script? Absolutely. For example, my name is Karthik and I log in to my dice or something out here and I use my email address and password. After that, is it showing my name there? So if I logged in, I want to see Karthik. If Paritosh, you logged in, you want to see Paritosh. All right. Or let's say for a very simple example that you go to dice.com. What do you see out here? Will it be the same thing if you will come back tomorrow? No, this might change. So the kind of, think about the logic. I want the text out here. That's my English statement. I need to convert that into something that Selenium can understand. <clears throat> and the command for that is basically saying something like, what is the text appearing here? Here is my target. My command is capture the text that is appearing here and compare it with a value. Then you're saying that you're enhancing that. Yes, absolutely possible. And that's what we will slowly get into. Uh, Akbar, your question, as you changed the ID equal to free underscore text value from Selenium to RC unit, they verified text present Selenium position on UI got changed. How, many, how come Selenium to know the update location of keyword Selenium? Right, right. Very good question. So the question that Akbar was asking me is, fair enough, when we did that first, very first test case, we only had a Selenium, one keyword out here. Then as I started adding new ones, that moved down. But how do I know that Selenium is appearing top or here or bottom? For that, I need to use a different command, similar to verify text present. But at this point, I have to right click and say verify text. The difference between this verify text command team and the verify text present is, verify text present is searching for that text anywhere in the application. Verify text is searching for that specific text at that target location in the application. Here I'm saying just search for this text. Here I'm saying search for this text but here is the location to identify it. What are these things that you're seeing in target are different representations of how Selenium can identify these elements. All right. We will come to those parts in day two and day three team. All right. Akbar, that's your question. Hope I could answer that. Any other questions team? Team, if you have questions, feel free to put it on the chat. You could also raise your hand if you are definitely sure you want to speak and I will have you unmuted. But make sure that it is relevant to what we are learning today. If we move one week down the line, you could ask me questions of what we've learned till then. Okay. We will not jump forward or we will not take questions which are all different. We will definitely handle it. They all require answers, but it's going to be offline. So team, I'm assuming at this point, there are no further questions. Uh, so just to let you know, the day two will be on uh, Tuesday evening. So there's a gap of almost like not Tuesday evening. Actually, I'll check the schedule and email everyone. But there's definitely at least three days gap, the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I just want you to look at, get organized, install everything so that you are practicing along with me as the sessions go forward. Okay? Because the most important thing is to practice when you're watching my video or you're listening to the sessions things may look simple easy your real challenge and which you'll have to overcome is that once you're practicing 
things may start turning a little differently. And that's where your practice is going to make you perfect about it. So Ravi, your question before I end the session is, how do you know the target name? I don't know the target name. I don't know what is being done inside each of the steps here. All that I know is that I could teach Selenium IDE the steps that I was performing as a manual test engineer earlier and I have tried to see that can IDE repeat those steps. When we move forward, we're going to master how is it that these steps are being done. From day 3 or day 4 team, we will not even do a record. We will straight away start to write the steps what we need from this three cells out here. Okay, but this is our beginning point. Team questions? Raj, again, just to let you know, your question is not relevant to this session, but yes, test NG is also covered. Okay, now, I will focus 75% of my attention on J unit. Then I will show you test engine one or two sessions. Now, what I do is exactly the same thing if we do it on J unit or test engine. These are just different frameworks inbuilt within uh, the Java overall. And you will be able to work with either. But I want you to master one, have the flavor of both. So you can then project that I am a master at both test NG and J unit. That's the intent. Yes, test engine is also covered. All right, team, thank you then. Thank you for attending day one. We'll see you back on day two. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me back or uh, call me. I'm currently away, but I will definitely try and return your voicemails. All right, team, take care then. Bye for now.